Voyager 1 was having communication problems again. At the end of October, Voyager 1 switched to its S-band transmitter, which hadn't been used since 1981. The problem was that this transmitter was extremely low power. It was lucky that engineers were able to pick up this S-band signal at all. If they couldn't figure out why this happened and ask Voyager to switch back to its X-band transmitter, then the mission of Voyager 1 would effectively be over. But what made fixing the probe exceptionally complicated was that the S-band transmitter was so low power it couldn't transmit science or engineering data back to Earth. That's why it was switched off decades ago. That means engineers at NASA's JPL had to figure out what was wrong with Voyager 1 and fix the problem without any data from the spacecraft. The problems first started when engineers ordered Voyager 1 to switch on one of its heaters. They were basically trying to reverse radiation damage in a process called annealing. They'd done careful calculations to make sure they had enough power to make this happen, but when they sent this command, Voyager 1 activated its fault protection system. This automatically turns off systems when there's more draw on Voyager 1's power than what is available. The team does use a virtual computer model to simulate what Voyager 1's power situation is at any given time. But it's not exact. There is no way to model the environment and the harsh radiation that Voyager 1 has been subject to these last few decades. This is a good signal that our virtual models of Voyager 1 may have reached their limit. The team thankfully was able to instruct Voyager 1 to turn its X-band transmitter back on. By the end of November, they were receiving science data back from Voyager 1. 